Hello and welcome to part 5 of this tutorial into how one can use a J-frame and a panel on it to act like a screen for an avatar in this case a button that can accept key presses to direct its locomotion around the screen. In particular left arrow, up arrow, down arrow and right arrow keys. We're at the stage in this um, project where we can move it as we've described. And now we're going to look into some detail of customization to make the game, if it were a game, look good. Or at least better. Well, let's take a look first of all at the key pressed method. We've got these statements here, and it could be argued they really should be uh, separated by else's. That's else ifs. So mutually exclusive selections actions uh, if you want to look at it so basically only one of these things uh, actions can take place uh, some purists might argue also that there should be uh, braces uh, superfluous braces where I haven't put any but I'm gonna leave it like this because for the sake of a tutorial uh, yeah, I think it's clearer but it works as you saw in the previous tutorial whether this is um, presented like this or not um, and you can see that here as I'm pressing keys randomly really around um, the arrow keys and you can see it's working just as before we are going to first of all um, give our attention to the constraint on the avatar to keep it within the form. To facilitate this I'm going to put a statement here at the conclusion of the method which shows the coordinates of the buttons left hand side and top um, above the form that is in what I've called the legend at the top. It's simply um, setting the title property or field to have the value of the X and the Y coordinate and uh, we can see that actually working here. As soon as I move the button we see those coordinates displayed at the top. Now this is so we can actually see the constraints are maintained. If we move the uh, button left we can see that the X coordinate is minus 55. Well in, the, in terms of my gameplay as it were that's not acceptable and similarly the right hand side has gone off the form and uh, now we've well off the form I can bring it back by pressing the left arrow key. The constraints with the system that I've designed and implemented will actually be inside these methods these helper methods because that's why we created them to actually take the detail out of here out of here and into here this is known in some languages as modularization or modularization I should say and um, here it's encapsulation and data hiding let us move up to have a look at moving left first of all to that particular helper method which is here 
before it can move left we would want that it was already right of the left wall now that sounds complicated but let me show you what I mean if I put this if, if statement here if the x coordinate of the button is more than or equal to zero then we move it left but if it isn't we don't now you may be looking at this equals and saying hang on we don't really want to move it um, left if it's equal to zero as it would go beyond the left wall the west wall however we're moving by five pixels not one so even if it's equal to zero it will go possibly five or four or some number of pixels uh, left so what I'm going to do is actually let it go left and then bounce it back again as if the avatar has bounced off the wall run up to it and hit himself in the face as it were you don't have to do this you can actually just um, not have the equals there it's really um, a lot of things in uh, in games it's really up to the designer uh, because it's all about the gameplay and that will be determined by the story that one is trying to present so here for moving left you move left only if you can move left and otherwise you don't but we're not going to leave it there because in actual fact there is an alternative to that action the else part which is actually that you place it at the left wall so if you have moved it so that it would go through the wall you actually place it so it doesn't it's at the wall so we have an else here and what do we put into that well we put it up against the left wall and we know that the x coordinate is zero when it's up against the wall but the y coordinate will be well whatever it was so we just get y and place it into that location let's see that run so we run our program and of course it's the left arrow button that I'm pressing now and if you look at the coordinates expressed in the legend at the top of the form that's why it was there you can actually see it goes minus five and then it's back at zero if I go right and then left it's kind of like it crashes against the wall it turns out that moving right is a little bit more difficult so we're going to leave that one for the moment and we're going to check the moving up literally check it so that we only move up when we can and that's a lot simpler uh, all we have to do is ask, ask whether or not the avatar is positioned below the top of the panel if it is it will have a Y coordinate greater than zero if it doesn't then well we just place it at zero that is we put it at the top and we don't change the x coordinate but we do change the y coordinate to zero so the same solution really in principle we might say it's the same algorithm so if we run that and just confirm it so this time we've gone down, we go up with the right uh, up arrow key and we can see it just bangs against it and is set to zero. Moving down and up are difficult cases compared to, sorry, moving down and right are difficult compared to the other cases. If we look at that left okay that's really quite straightforward up very straightforward but when we want to go right when we actually reach the point at which we want to stop 
that's when we've got 340 pixels uh, from the left hand side of the panel and yet if we move it you can see that they actually increase the x coordinate in increases but the avatar is already off the form so we have to take into account the width of the button so the right hand side of the button is in actual fact the width of the button plus the x coordinate value of the button so it's actually the position here is the position um, the value or distance of the left hand side of the panel to the left hand side of the button plus the width of the button. Now we can express that in code in this way. So we're looking at moving right. To facilitate finding the right hand side we're actually going to do a little bit of computation. I'll just finish this off while you have a look at the code. We're going to say that the right hand side of the avatar is the x coordinate plus the width of the avatar. And we're going to say that the right hand side of the room, that is the east wall value, is actually the width of the content panes field width. So we're going to actually say the right hand side is in fact the width of the panel. Then we're going to use them in a comparison. We're going to say if the avatar right hand side is less than or equal to the room right hand side, then we move towards the wall otherwise we don't. Now before we said with move left that there was an alternative that if we couldn't move further left we should leave it at the left hand side. Similarly if we can't move right should we leave it at the right hand side? this may or may not be necessary depending on what your constraints are and what your gameplay is but this would make sure it was against the right hand wall if it couldn't be moved right when it's um, over on the right hand side similarly when we move up we didn't have an alternative when it couldn't move up we didn't actually reset it where it should be and we saw that didn't wasn't actually necessary but let's just be kind of perfect as it were in that um, this is kind of dotting the i's and crosses the t crossing the t's it isn't um, necessary perhaps in the context of our simple operation So I'm going to move the right arrow key right and it keeps going right and then it stops and kind of comes up against a clash against the right hand wall. We go left, similar thing is happening and we go up and a similar thing is happening but if we go down we still have the anomaly where we can actually uh, lose the avatar at the bottom. Now you're probably thinking, in fact uh, you should be thinking, well wait, wait, wait a minute, what will we need to do? Well, when the avatar is actually at the limit of the bottom of the form as far as its uh, size is concerned, we know that the top of the button is actually equal to the y coordinate but we can see that there is a function 
that we need to know about, which is the height of the button. The height of the button will determine where the bottom of the button is. So if we add the height of the button to its top value, its y coordinate, we'll actually get the bottom of the button. And what we don't want is for the bottom of the button value to be greater than the bottom of the form. Because then, if we do that, it will in fact not be constrained within the room or the screen. So let's reflect that in code. Let's put our algorithm into our source code. We're actually going down here. Um, so there's the down. And we're going to do a similar calculation. We're going to find the bottom of the form as the height and the bottom of the avatar as its y coordinate plus its height and we're going to say that if the bottom of the avatar is less than the bottom of the form we can move our button down otherwise we can't again for completeness we're going to have an else option um, or action I should say there sorry and the else action is we're going to put it where we want it um, to look correct so we're going to put it at the x coordinate it's at the button I mean and the bottom of the form less the height of the control the object the button and that will put it where it should be sitting on the bottom of the form when we're trying to push it with the down arrow off the form. Let's see all of that running. So I'm pressing down with the down arrow key and there it stops. I'm pressing right with the right arrow key and it stops. I'm pressing up with the up arrow key and it stops and left with the left arrow key and it stops. So we have the functioning that we asked for at the beginning or set out as our goal at the beginning. Well I hope that that has made clear how you can keep it within the form if that's your gameplay to do so. We mentioned in an earlier tutorial that the button could have a costume, that is an image, an icon as the language is going to call it. And if we go back up to our um, constructor, I took out this instruction where we set the button before it's instantiated. instantiated sorry instantiated to have an icon how we do that is covered in the final tutorial part part 6